So, this afternoon's little mission, you know outside floods, don't you? And it's the wash that comes up against the door. Well, remember I put this edge on it, didn't I? Can you see it? It's all see, can you see it? You can see the edge, can't you? So that works quite well. And, and the wing backs over it. I was worried about the wing. So when that's shut now, the, 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 the wash doesn't come up this way. But the last time it did go over, it flooded the garage and the problem was the, <laughs> I couldn't get the water out of the garage uh, there was only a small amount of it but so anyway I ended up making a hole making like an emergency hole in the wall um, here we are there was an emergency hole in the wall and that's how I got the bulk of the water out it was over here let's go and have a look so I just banged a hole here at the time so now I'm going to fit that. But the the thing is, the um, there's a slight edge. I don't suppose it matters which way it goes. I'm going to put it in that way. And this edge is flat. But there's a slight lip there. So I'm going to cut that lip out. So that all it has to do, the water, is climb higher than the thickness of the plastic. Well, so otherwise it would have to climb the thickness of this edge, which would then leave a, a puddle, you know, a create a knot out. So cut that out with the old Dremel, the old handy thing with the old Dremel thing on it. Cut that out and then cut a hole um, and then put this in there. Yeah. So that's um, today's or this afternoon's little mission. Just like to add on, I've got to trim this now, clean, take all the burning off it. If you haven't got one, these are well worth having in your little armory of tools. They're a, such a handy tool. I've had this a very long time. Obviously, there are different makes, but and they go at a hell of a speed and always wear glasses because if this little blade breaks, it comes at a hell of a speed. So you've got to keep your face out of the way of this little grind anything that's spinning because you know as you can see it revs at a hell of a rate of knots let me just put it on for you look it just and then that is absolutely flat out but you know in your armory if uh, if if you're somebody's uh, if you've got an husband and you you're wondering what to buy him for his christmas or his birthday or a treat then uh, Oh, there are very handy things to have in your um, armory of tools. They come highly recommended. This little, um, you know, Dremel happens to be the make, I'm sure. I think they were the first, but uh, they're, they're well worth picking up, these little Dremels. Never give them a miss. So I've changed from the little cutting disc to the little sanding disc. There's all sorts of tips and all sorts to go with them. Um, but this particular, these are really good. Once your dog gets used to it, they're very good for trimming the dog nails. You've got to watch with Harry because they tend to grab the fur. But um, they're very good for trimming your pooch's nails. Well, big pooch's nails, you know, big bigger dogs. Um, it might be too way too scary for littler dogs, but for Charlie size uh, goldens size um they do just fine anyway i'm gonna carry on trimming i forgot to tell you about the dog they're good for a dog and there's all sorts of attachments for them i'm sending the box off to repair well only because it's got the label really in it so this box st old stupid ass reggie dropped it and it broke the box so i'm going to remember the um Pratt and Whitney box got fixed by Tone. So, Tone, you're going to fix my box for me, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. So, this is a before. To the box doctor. Before it goes to the box doctor, yeah. And uh, we'll see when it comes back. Only because the box isn't much important. It's only it's got the it's got the um, yeah it's got the label on it. Yeah. So we've knocked a hole brick size the vent size in there I was gonna say never be worried about picking up this always pick up a 
a 110. First of all, they're safer, safer on a site. And you've always got the option then of, uh, if you see one, come up for sale. Once you've got the box, it opens a whole world of, it's no good, you know, obviously this drill is no good without the box. So you wouldn't really buy the drill, would you? But once you've got a box, you can buy a whole world of 110 tools and because they're 110, they're a lot safer than, you know, your standard ordinary drills if they go wrong and they decide to fry you. So this is the little compressor I keep under the table. Um, anyway, this is just a gentle reminder to remind us all that as a minimum, you should drain the crap out the bottom of these tanks, the condensation out the bottom of these tanks at least once a year at a minimum once a year uh, every six months if it's easy and convenient so i've charged the tank uh, let's get this see how much rubbish is in there if it's going to turn <laughs> it's not going to turn now is it <laughs> no i'm gonna have to get the pliers hold on i'll be back or he'll be back see i told you i'd be back yeah, you should drain the tanks as a minimum once a year. That's, did that get that going? Yeah, right. Yeah, the sound, the the sound of the phone might might switch this off. The noise. But let's see how much crap comes out of this. I haven't really used it much, but all the same, there's going to be a load in there. Are you ready? Here it comes. See. tanks at least once a year because uh, if you don't believe me go and see the, the films on YouTube of when these rusty old tanks explode yeah once a year you should really maybe more often if you use the tank all the time but always drain your tanks it's that time of year just a gentle reminder go and uh, go and get your tank sorted and drain your tanks so it's called charging your tank so i've got pressure in that tank but i haven't got volume so what i use is i use this tank for volume that's just an empty tank that i connect the little one to and then what i do is i connect through the wall i've got another little baby compressor here and this little baby compressor tops me up that blue one does 90 psi and this brings it up to 115 psi and i've also got air here should i need it the little compressor runs here so we'll go and do that now then we'll connect it through do you see the lead that goes through the wall so that connects to this this is the top up compressor because uh, you know when you're working in the garage you don't really want a noise in the same room do you so I use that to top up with, and of course it helps it when, you, when you're filling the both of them because they're only two little compressors, but obviously two lot of cheaper compressors. <laughs> now, let me just show you something. I have got 
a big compressor that I haven't dealt with. Um, my friend Tone gave me it and it's here. I haven't done nothing with it, but I've got this to fire up yet. Um, it tends to trip, so I was going to put a smaller pulley on it uh, to try and stop the, the, the thing, plus it leaks oil. Um, so I need to take that, get that, send that refurbished or even replace it and gear it down so it's not qu quite a pull on it. So, hmm, we have got bigger compressed air here, but we haven't got around to fixing it yet or to making it work. It's one of the jobs to do yet. Before all the, no all the noise begins, um, this, uh, this and the other little compressors fill this now. Hmm. I had this roadways. You know, anybody remember roadways in Aldridge? Kevin Bradley. Oh, I must have had this ten or fifteen years. It's it's an old gas bottle. It's not an air bottle. It's an old gas bottle being made up. Yeah, I had to take the end of it to to make it fit under here. So if anything's ready to blow this is the blow but it's only a feed in obviously a gauge a blow off valve so it doesn't over pressurize itself so we're going to charge this up and then we're going to give this a a little bleeding as well with a little tap under there so uh let's do that i won't film that bit because it makes a hell of a noise can you hear it can you hear it look it's transferring the air into there pushing that up volume and this is where I keep my volume. Oh, yeah. She's just knocked herself off. Just for convenience, we're going to kill it. Check the blow off. The blow off valve's working on that one. This gauge is working. This is the oiling line. So if you're using air tools, you plug it in here for the oil line. If you want a dry line, you come back up here and you plug it in through this one. So that supplies your dry, filtered air. Get the moisture out of it before we do the valve let's just make sure the blow off valve is working so let's uh get around under here now and let's blow this one off mm. it don't seem that bad So uh, this is just a gentle reminder, once a year at least, blow your tanks off, get all the condensation and the filth and the water out of the bottom of the tanks which cause the rust, which perishes the metal, which then blows up the tank. Well, handy little job, handy little job. Next time we make a bit of mix now, all we have to do is put a bit of mix or if we're using some expanding foam, something like that and it will allow the water to, because what was happening, it was coming here and it was building up and then it was going to the rest of the garage. So I had to make that wall, wall, hold so it will escape. So, hmm, good job, Reggie. Good job, Reggie.